In the aftermath of the Polish invasion, the German High Command, Oberkommando de Heers, OKH, recognized the inadequacies of the light divisions and issued a directive to overhaul them into fully equipped panzer divisions. Consequently, in October 1939, the Second Light Division underwent a transformation, emerging as the 7th Panzer Division, one of Germany's formidable armored units. Comprising 218 tanks organized into three battalions, alongside two rifle regiments, a motorcycle battalion, an engineer battalion, and an anti-tank battalion, the division was primed for combat. Newly promoted General Erwin Rommel, having distinguished himself in the Polish campaign and earned the favor of Hitler, secured command of the division through a direct intervention from the Fuhrer. Assuming leadership on February 10, 1940, Rommel wasted no time in initiating rigorous training exercises to prepare his unit for the challenges ahead. Under Rommel's guidance, the 7th Panzer Division diligently practiced maneuvers essential for the impending campaign. From river crossings to tactical deployments, every aspect of warfare was meticulously rehearsed to ensure readiness and proficiency on the battlefield. The invasion of France and Belgium commenced on May 10, 1940. Within three days, the 7th Panzer Division, led by Rommel, and three other Panzer Divisions under General Heinz Guderian had reached the River Meuse, only to find the bridges destroyed. Despite initial difficulties crossing due to French suppressive fire, Rommel persisted, and by May 16, the division had achieved its target at Avain sur help where Rommel chose to press forward rather than halt as planned. By May 20, the division had advanced to Arras, where General Hermann Hoth ordered strategic maneuvers to isolate the British garrison. The British, however, countered with a fierce attack, utilizing heavily armored Matilda tanks, which the German anti-tank weaponry struggled against. Eventually, with reinforcements, the Germans managed to repel the British assault. Hitler issued a halt order on May 24, possibly due to an overestimation of British forces or to preserve armor for the Paris offensive. The halt was lifted on May 26, and the 7th Panzer Division continued its advance, capturing Lille on May 27 and forcing its surrender by May 31. Meanwhile, the evacuation of Allied forces from Dunkirk concluded on June 4, with a large number of troops rescued but leaving behind much equipment. Resuming its advance on June 5, the division aimed for the River Seine but found the bridges destroyed upon arrival in Rouen. It then moved north, blocking the route to Le Havre and compelling thousands of Allied troops to surrender at St. Valery-en-Cox on June 12. By June 17, the division was ordered to Cherbourg Naval Base, achieving rapid advances and securing surrender by June 19. The division, known for its swift movements that often bewildered both enemies and superiors, earned the moniker Ghost Division. Following the French armistice on June 22, the division was placed in reserve, undergoing re-equipping and preparing for Operation Sea Lion, the planned invasion of Britain, which ultimately never materialized due to insufficient air superiority. In February, the division returned to Germany, stationed near Bonn in preparation for Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union. After a period of deception and security measures, the division assembled in East Prussia and commenced the invasion on June 8, 1941. The onset of Operation Barbarossa on June 22, 1941, saw unexpectedly feeble resistance at the border, allowing the division's tanks to swiftly advance towards the Neman River at Olida, Alidus, covering 60 kilometers by midday. The Soviet 5th Tank Division stationed on the east bank was caught off guard, enabling the Germans to seize two bridges and establish bridgeheads. However, fierce counterattacks from the Soviets brought the German advance to a sudden halt. Equipped with 300 tanks, including 55 T-34s and KV-1s, the 5th Tank Division inflicted the first combat losses on the Panzer forces from concealed positions. Reinforced later in the day, the Germans repelled probing attacks but opted to delay further advancement until their supplies caught up. After losing 80 tanks in nighttime probing attacks against the bridgeheads, the 5th Tank Division retreated northeastward. Capitalizing on the cleared path, the division advanced another 100 kilometers, capturing Vilnius with its motorcycle battalion the following day. Handing over control of Vilnius, the division resumed its eastward march. Unlike past campaigns, Soviet defenders often chose to fight on rather than surrender, prolonging engagements and frustrating German progress. Despite resistance, the division managed to sever vital communications near Minsk by June 26, linking up with the 18th Panzer Division and encircling significant Soviet forces west of Minsk. In a rapid three-day push, the division threatened Smolensk and encircled the Soviet 20th Army, though the gap between German groups remained open, allowing Soviet forces to maneuver. 
Attempts to fully close the encirclement fell short, but sustained pressure eventually eradicated the pocket, with the division relieved by infantry units for rest and refitting. Throughout the campaign, the division endured significant casualties, with 2,055 killed, 5,737 wounded, and additional losses due to illness. By January 1942, casualties totaled 9,203. Following engagements at Reserve and Viasma, the division withdrew to southern France for rest and refitting, boasting a reduced strength of 8,589 personnel by May 1942, many of whom were replacements. In mid-May, the division was transported by rail to southern France, where it was tasked with coastal protection duties under the 1st Army commanded by Von Funk. Despite the division's readiness deadline being set for September 1, the 2-slash-Panzer Regiment 25 had to temporarily make do with French tanks. However, new equipment was soon issued, including 35 PZ-3JS, 14 PZ-3NS, and 30 PZ-4GS, while the division's two rifle regiments were redesignated as Panzergrenadier regiments. Hitler's concerns regarding the potential for an Allied invasion of the continent escalated following the Allied landings in West and North Africa on November 8. Consequently, on November 11, as part of Case Anton, the division was dispatched to the former Vichy France region, tasked with securing the Mediterranean coast between Perpignan and Narbonne. Gathering in a staging area near AIXN province, the division prepared for Operation Lila, aimed at seizing the Vichy French fleet at the naval port of Toulon to prevent it from falling into Allied hands. For this mission, the division received reinforcements from other units, including two armored groups and a motorcycle battalion from the SS Division Das Reich, along with a Marine detachment led by Commander Gumprich. The Marine detachment Gumprich was specifically tasked with capturing the French ships before they could be scuttled or set sail. Despite entering Toulon at 4 o'clock on November 27, 1942, and successfully capturing the main arsenal and coastal defenses, the division was unable to prevent the scuttling of the French fleet, resulting in the operation's failure. Subsequently, the division was stationed in the region between Marseille and Avignon until January 1943, when the deteriorating situation on the German front in the southern Soviet Union necessitated its return to the Eastern Front. Upon transfer to Army Group South, the division played a crucial role in halting the Soviet advance aimed at cutting off the 1st Panzer Army in the Caucasus. It successfully checked the Soviet progress at Rostov, ensuring an escape route for the 1st Panzer Army. Continuing its defensive efforts along the Don and Donitz River lines, the division also participated in the Third Battle of Kharkov. In the summer of 1943, the division was involved in the offensive at Korsk, serving as part of Army Detachment Kemp's armored formations tasked with safeguarding the eastern flank of the southern German pincer. However, the division suffered significant losses during this battle, reducing its tank count to just 15 and its infantry combat strength equivalent to three battalions. Following the conclusion of the German offensive at Korsk, the division was transferred to the 68 Panzer Corps, with General Major Asso von Manchufel assuming command on August 20, 1943. The Soviet steppe front launched a massive attack on August 3, 1943, led by the 1st Tank Army and the 5th Guards Tank Army, which pierced the German front west of Belgorod. Attached to the 4th Panzer Army, the division engaged in fierce battles against the Soviet 40th Army but was eventually relieved from the front lines to form a shock group with the Großdeutschland Division. Together, they conducted a counterattack into the Soviet flank, achieving initial success by driving deep into the Red Army's lines. However, further Soviet reinforcements hampered their progress, leading to a withdrawal to the Dnieper River line. The division's losses in August exceeded those of July, resulting in the disbandment of the replacement battalion. With diminished combat effectiveness due to losses in heavy infantry weapons and motor vehicles, the division retreated to the Dnieper position, crossing the river at Kremenchuk. Subsequently, the division participated in the defensive battle of Kiev and the German counterattack at Jatomir, earning commendations for distinguished conduct. It then engaged in a series of defensive battles during the long retreat across Ukraine. In July 1944, the division was redeployed north to the Baltic states and the northern area of Army Group Center to counter the Soviet Baltic Offensive. It fought defensively in Lithuania and later retreated to a defensive perimeter around Memel during the Memel Offensive. Eventually, the division was relieved and evacuated by sea, leaving heavy equipment behind. On November 7, 1944, the remaining elements of the division were assembled at the Air's training area in East Prussia, where partial reorganization took place, forming a reserve for the 2nd Army of Army Group Center. 
In January 1945, the Soviet Second Belarusian Front launched a massive offensive, breaching the defenses of the Second Army. The division's Kampfgrupp engaged in a rearguard action through northern Poland, including battles at Elblog and east of Grujats. Crossing the Vistula, the division participated in defensive battles in and around Chajnas. By mid-February 1945, it was pushed back into northern Pomerania, where it continued to fight a delaying action in areas such as Gdynia, north and west of Danzig. On April 19, 1945, surviving personnel were evacuated by sea from the Hell Peninsula, with only a small remnant returning. This remnant regrouped on the Baltic Sea island of Usedom in western Pomerania and retreated westward through Prussia, ultimately surrendering to the British army near Schwerin, north and west of Berlin, in May 1945. War crimes allegations. Historian Raffel Scheck notes that while there is no direct evidence implicating Rommel himself, his unit operated in regions where German massacres of French prisoners of war were common during June 1940. According to some accounts, during the French campaign, the division, along with troops from the 5th Panzer Division, committed several atrocities against French forces. These included the alleged murder of 50 surrendering officers and soldiers at Quesnoy and Arains. After the war, a memorial was erected for the French officer Charles Nkorora, purportedly executed by soldiers under Rommel's command. Czech suggests the division's likely involvement in the Hengist Sursam POW executions, though he believes they were not directly responsible for massacres at Arains and nearby villages. French historian Dominique Lormier suggests that the division may have been responsible for the deaths of 109 individuals in Arains, mainly French African soldiers from Senegal. Historian Daniel Butler acknowledges the possibility of the massacre at Luquesnoy, citing the presence of Nazis like Karl Hank in the division, although he notes the scarcity of sources regarding such actions. However, he finds it unlikely that Rommel sanctioned or was aware of such actions. Some historians, like Showalter, dispute the occurrence of the massacre at Luquesnoy. Klaus Telp mentions that Arains was not within the division sector but suggests that elements of the division might have been involved in incidents at Hengist and Martinville, including shooting prisoners and using British Colonel Broomhall as a human shield. Telp believes it improbable that Rommel approved or knew of these incidents. Here is a list of the commanding officers of the 7th Panzer Division during various periods. General Major George Stumm, October 18, 1939 to February 5, 1940. General Major Erwin Rommel, February 5, 1940 to February 14, 1941. General Major Hans Freiherr von Funk, February 15, 1941 August 2017, 1943. Oberst Wolfgang Glasmer, August 17, 1943 to August 20, 1943. General Major Asso von Manchefel, August 20, 1943 to January 1, 1944. General Major Adalbert Schultz, January 1, 1944 to January 28, 1944, killed in action. Oberst Wolfgang Glasmer, January 28, 1944 to January 30, 1944. General Major Dr. Karl Moss, January 30, 1944 to May 2, 1944. General Major Gerhard Schmidhuber, May 2, 1944 to September 9, 1944. General Major Dr. Karl Moss, September 9, 1944 to October 31, 1944. General Major Helmuth Mader, October 31, 1944 to November 30, 1944. General Major Dr. Karl Moss, November 30, 1944 to January 5, 1945. General Major Max Lemke, January 5, 1945 to January 23, 1945. General Major Dr. Karl Moss, January 23, 1945 to March 25, 1945. Oberst Hans Christern, March 26, 1945 to May 8, 1945. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.